Hi, I'm Danny, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my view about male and female and the value and their position and who's equal or not equal. I've been looking at the debate online and I'm thinking to myself, uh, I don't even want to get involved in it, but I, I was thinking last night, I guess it's better if I'm wrong to just say my view and get corrected at this point than to continue on. So I look at both sides of the debate and I think there's truth on both sides. Um, and I guess I find myself, I don't know where I fit. So, uh, but I've learned a lot from both sides and listening to them. So I appreciate the debate and I appreciate looking at it. Um, and I guess I would like to be corrected wherever I'm wrong, but I don't view things exactly the same as, I don't know. Um, I, anyways, this is how I view things. Um, so I view the, so I'm gonna go through oh, what, how I view things. This is how I explain it. How I understand it in my mind, how I, th I think I see this is the plain scripture of how it says things are, and so um, that's what I'll explain. So it says up here, uh, Father. So so th this line, basically above all is God, and on this side of this line is spirit, and on this side of this line is flesh. So we have spirit, heaven, or God, and you'll hear that in the Bible. Jesus grew with God and man. You made heaven and earth, uh, and we have spirit and flesh. Are you fleshly? Are you earthly? Um, <clears throat> false religion is either uh, fleshly, all, all focused on the flesh and works, or, and that's like, uh, we might think of Catholicism as that way, as work salvation, or maybe the Pharisees were work salvation. And then Gnosticism is spiritual. When you focus on the spiritual and you don't worry about the physical, and Gnosticism is over here when we just take this part of what God says and Christianity is when we take uh, both of what God says and we work with that together and we understand that those are realities that we live in um, I, that's what I think anyways we 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 get both we we understand the spiritual and and the earthly so in the creation I think God has given us the picture of the reality, I think Paul says that in marriage we have a great mystery of Christ in the church. So there's a there's a physical reality, a physical reality of something spiritual, and I think that it's just a model of, of what God has made. So I think that's the to my understanding, that's the first thing to understand is that we are not just created as independent beings doing whatever we want. We are created as a model and picture of, of the spiritual. So in the, in the fleshly, uh, we view God in the flesh as Jesus, and we're the husband, the husbands, and then we have the bride or wives, and then there's children. I don't really understand children that much, how they fit in the picture. I think they do, but it's just not something that's clear to me. Um, and so, so we have husbands and brides, and then in the spiritual, right, we have Jesus is the husband, and the church is the bride. And so that's the picture of, of that. And so I think, you know, when we have a husband and wife together, we have offspring and life is created. When Jesus and the church are together, that's where we have life and offspring. So that's that's the part I know. Uh, these are children, these are children too, but I, I don't know if they're spiritual children or if they're unbelievers. I really don't know what, what the children in the spiritual realm are. But <clears throat> I don't know that that's important for this discussion because I think the discussion is on the value of the man and the female. Are they equal? Are they unequal? Does one serve the other? How does it work? And that's, that's why I think this is important to understand. So as a husband, I came up with this as a husband to say, okay, how should I be treating my wife? And how should she be treating me? And what's our function? How do we work together? Because I believe that we're supposed to be one. Um, and I don't know that I believe we're equal in the sense that we're, we're definitely not the same. We weren't created the same. We weren't <clears throat> uh, designed the same. We have different functions. We have different bodies. We weren't created at the same time. Um, there's differences. I don't think that differences means that men are more important. In fact, I'll explain that later. I don't think that, but I definitely think that we're different um, in, in almost every way, but not different because it's necessity not different because uh, 
not different because one's better than the other. So, um, so in this picture, so I came up with this. So as a husband, I said, okay, I, as a husband, look to Jesus for my role. Jesus, what did you do? Um, Jesus, life, that should be my life. I, I should uh, teach my wife. My yoke should be easy. My burden should be light. I love my wife. I should uh, want to give her everything. When she uh, is unfaithful to me, I should be long-suffering with her. When she is unfaithful to the point of, uh, of me rejecting her because it's right to reject her, I should die for her and to myself and, and still continue to try to win her and love her back. So that's broadly the picture of, of you know, what I see, those behaviors. So then I said, what, what does the, what, how should my wife behave? Then I should look over here and, and say, well, what does the church supposed to be doing? And, um, and you see, you know, just think of how the church should be related to Christ. Well, I don't know that, that the church is seeking equality with Christ. Are, are, are Jesus and the church equal? I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. I don't think the church would even want to seek equality with Jesus. Um, but I don't think Jesus looks down on the church in any way either. So I don't believe that like just because Jesus is higher than the church, um, the church, so all believers everywhere is how I'm using the term. Um, I think that it's supposed to be that way. And so... Uh, so anyway, so that's how I, I would say, okay, how is the church supposed to treat um, husband? How is the wife supposed to be the husband? The bride should look at the church. And what does the church do? Uh, <clears throat> anyways, so now that gets interesting because like Christ is the head of the church. So, right, Christ is the head of the church. So the church... Actually, the husband is the head of the church. So that the husband, being the head of the church, so that, that's the husband's position in the physical is the head of the family. But the husband's position in the spiritual is the head of the church. And so the husband should be really focused in, in, the, in the earth on submission to Jesus in that way. So... So I say the, the wife looks at what the church does, but the, the wife should also be looking at how the husband submits to Christ because the husband is this person. So as, as husbands, we, we not only have the duty to, in the physical, represent Jesus in this world, but in the spiritual, we have the duty to submit to Jesus in the way the bride submits. So while we're looking, while our wife is looking at the church, to learn what she should be doing in the physical world, she should look to us to understand what submission is. And when we're submitting to Christ the way we ought to be, we don't need to like probably ask her to submit to us because I think that's evident. Um, but I think we do need to explain that this is the case where the bride is submitting to, to Jesus. Um, I hope that makes sense. So the husband has to understand, his mentality has to be, what is the bride doing for Jesus, right? Uh, so I look to Jesus to live in this world, and I look to the bride to see how, to, how, to, how is my relationship with Jesus is actually looking to the bride. And so, and the bride is looking here, and the bride is looking to the husband. Um, to learn submission, we learn from the husband and his relationship with Christ and to learn how to behave in the physical we're looking at what would the church be doing so that's the relationship um that i see with this and and it i think it is important to understand that there is a difference um because there's a picture and so uh i think husbands ought to want to be like jesus in in that sense and and the brides should view their husband as Christ um, and want that picture of, of this unity to be in the world.
because that's the picture of the spiritual unity we're all trying to achieve in our lives and as a community of believers. So I don't think that uh, I don't think it does anybody any favors to say, well, we're we're the same because we're not in the spiritual. Um, and and I don't know how we are in the physical either. Um, if if anyway, so so if I I uh, want to like talk a little bit about submission and what I mean by it, and I don't know how to do it except for for I have this mixer. This is what I use for it. I say that like that this represents a man, a creation of God, and this represents the woman, a creation of God. They're very different. Um, they are not the same. I don't know how to value them because really they're really supposed to be together. So um, and so, and so if you have like the like well the way I look at it in creation is God made man and he said it's not good like this is pretty useless without something else right and so he said okay, I make a woman helpful helpful suitable for you um, not the same it's, it's prettier and it actually makes things work. Um, because this is pretty loud and obnoxious without it and it really doesn't do anything um, but this also it looks pretty and it, it has a function you can tell but also it's more it's its power is limited alone and then you put them together so this is submission is understanding I am here this is me I made what I'm supposed to be and woman understanding I am made what I'm supposed to be and our job is actually to go together um, and when we're one, like this is one. And so I have to be who I am as a man and she has to be who she is as a woman. We have to come together, but what happens when we come together is I am more of a man, when my wife and I are in one, I am more of a man than I was alone. And when my wife is in one with me, she's more of a woman than she was alone. So instead of the submission causing either to be degraded, it actually causes both to be exalted and to be a, in proper relationship and function for their design. So that's how I understand submission and the reason it, that that's why I think, uh, that's why I'm not too keen on equal because uh, I look at it the other way. If we, if we break this, when the fall happened, we break this and it says woman's gonna try to rule over man. And that's like, well, that's stupid. And man, Part of the curse is man's gonna rule over you well that's stupid a woman by herself has no purpose because she was made for something it's like well what's that for it might look good but what's it for a man on his own is not good um, but we're made to, to go together and to be a, a thing now uh, does that mean all men have to be married all women have to be married no because in this scenario until you're married, you, you're in this category. You're a child and a part of the family. So, so like a woman that doesn't get married, she's still a part of her family. Um, and a man that doesn't get married, he's still a part of his family. And the reason you leave the family, the only reason to leave the family is to be united like this with your wife. So a single man or a single woman, they're not like out of God's plan. They're just, they're just still in this category of children, of offspring. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So that's the submission of how I understand submission. Equality, I guess I say like this, like equal with what? Um, all of us are God's, all of us were made by God, everything. Cows, women, men, everything is made by God. So we're all equal in that sense. Um, so all, all of us are made by God. And then we look at like, well, who's more important, man, woman, or we want to be equal. And I think... Oh, equality is like it would be equality in the situation would be like this. Oh, hey, we're equal. We're not going to go into the function that God has for us. So, and I have another analogy that I want to look at is, is the egg. If we look at this as the male being the, the outer coating that's hard and then the female being the yolk and the white stuff on the inside. Okay, if that's the creation that we are, like who's more important? or who's more valuable. It's, it's ridiculous to even think about that. We need the whole thing. And the, 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 the value I think that in nature that we would say is really the value isn't the, the man or the woman, but it's the life inside. And then the shell isn't the life and the yolk and the white stuff isn't the life. The life is a different part of this egg. 
the yolk and the shell are actually there to preserve that life and to bring it forth. And so to think like what's what's more equal? Are they the same? Are they equally valuable? I suppose as a unit they are equally valuable. Um, as individual things, I, again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to describe that value, um, but I don't think that I don't know how to. I guess I don't know how to say equality in that sense, because they're both creations of God, and He made them the way He wanted them, and that's what our goal should be: is to submit to how we're made. All right. Last thing, if we really want to determine a value of women and men, then I think we look at creation. And it's, and it's pretty plain, the value, in my opinion. This is how I look at it. So uh, if we said creation is a meter, a value meter, um, God says he's the beginning and the end, then we, would look at, we could look at creation. One way to think about it is we look at creation and say, okay, as we get away from God being the beginning and the end, I think he's throughout everything, but as we get away from what God is, right, we get to the lowest value in the middle, and then we build back up to this highest value. Okay, we have day one is creation, created of creation. Day seven is rest. And if we go back to day six, we're going to look, and the male's created first, right? And the, the next thing created that's closest to where God is at the end is female. Um, so she's created last. So in in uh, in the economy, I guess of God's economy, the you know, the first will be last and the last will be first. So if male is first, I don't know that that gives him a higher value than women. Uh, you know, according to that kind of kind of thinking, if, if that's something or not, maybe it's just my own, I don't know. But I look at that and I think, well, woman is this precious treasure that God has made. Um, if God were going to put this egg together and he says, oh, I'm going to make this, this uh, yolk and stuff, well, I need the container first. Um, he's going to make that, and then he'll say, okay, here's the container, and now here's, here's the, the contents. And the reason they're there is actually for this life that's going to come out of it. And so, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I think that if we just look at what the Bible says plainly and, and understand that, that our job is not to decide who's, more, who's better or worse, then that's good. Now, I understand that women today feel abused, um, so maybe they say, oh, that's all good, but what about abuse? I think one thing is that um, women are not the only one abused in our culture or society. Men are abused as well, um, and the abuses equally rank on both sides, I believe. So I think looking at it as men are abusers and women are not, I think that's crazy. Um, I'm studying that because Anyways, because I think it's important to know the truth. I think as a man, I, I always uh, I always accept that women are um, are abused and men are bad. And I think maybe that's our culture. And I, I've grown up with that, and that's the way I, I default to that. But I'm studying our men being abused, and it's rank in our culture right now. Men are being terribly abused, I believe, um, by... The system and by women and the, the by the view that men are abusers that's that is an abuse on men right off the bat because that is the way our culture views men as abusers as disposable as unimportant um, their pains and sufferings are unimportant so anyways um, abuse is equal but if you want to like if, if a husband wants to know how to love his wife or uh, if you want to know what how you should treat someone to me I, I would look at it as well I am, as a husband, I'm, I'm the head of the bride, and so I look at Jesus as a husband to me, and I ask myself, would I want, would Jesus do this to me? Okay, if I was Jesus' bride, uh, and I didn't want to have sex with him, would he rape me? I don't think so. I think that's insane to think that he would, and I certainly wouldn't view it as love. Um, so... You know, if, if I was the bride and, and, you know, Jesus, is he going to always, is he going to try to be patient with me and help me understand? I, I think so. So anyways, that's how I look at it. How would Jesus as a husband treat me what, if I was his wife and I am his bride? And that is the way, that is my, my goal to treat my wife. Um, so I look at the spiritual and how Jesus treats us. 
And I say that's how I should treat my wife. I should be patient. I should be understanding. I should be loving because that's how Jesus is with me. I'm wrong all the time. Every single time I don't trust Jesus, every single time I get mad at him, I'm wrong. Every single time. And yet I want Jesus to love me, to forgive me, to be understanding, to talk to me, to be patient, to wait, uh, to care for my needs. And the thing is, is he does. Like the disciples are afraid and he's like, okay, I'll put out the storm. I don't know what you guys are you know, worried for, but I'll put out the storm for you guys. Um, I just see that's how he loves them. And I, but I also think that the, that women need to look at the bride and, and say, look, um, our husband has a function, and that, that function is important, and I want him to be who God made him to be. And that means that I have to be in the position I'm supposed to be in. I can't, I can't think I'm more than I am or less than I am. I need to be what I am. And if you think, what do we as the church want to be to Jesus? And I, I, if, I, if I had to answer that question, I'd say open up Proverbs 31 and read it, because that's exactly what the church ought to be doing for Jesus. I don't think that women have to live up for that to that standard alone. I think the men and women, as we join together as, as an assembly, live up to Proverbs 31, and that's what the church should be. But, and, and I guess what I, when I think about a woman, when I look at that text personally, I look at it and I say, this woman, the thing about this woman is that she had to, I, I don't think she could do everything by herself, but she had to be in such support of her husband that every single thing he did, she got the credit for, right? Because she, whatever she was doing, I don't think she was doing all those tasks by herself. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that the bride, we can't do it as the bride by ourselves. We must have Christ with us to do that. And I think in Proverbs 31, it, it, I think, it, at least my thinking is that, that the Proverbs 31 is showing us what it's like when a husband and wife are one and when they work together that there's no fear that there's uh there's plenty of food that there's we're working night and day because of the unity that we have um that's my view and I, and so anyways i think that's all i have to say i hope that makes sense and i'd like to know where i'm wrong what i'm missing um i think abuse is horrible i think emotional abuse physical abuse sexual abuse is all real and I think it's horrible. I don't think Jesus would do that to his bride. I wouldn't want Jesus to do that to me. So I think all that is horrible. Um, but I think it's equally horrible if women are not uh, respecting their husbands and understanding he has a job to do and submitting to that job and, um, and seeing that, that, that this thing is what we're after. That we are one and we have this function apart. We can't do it. And so... In my marriage, I'm working on like, okay, what's your function? What's my function? How can we go together? There's lots of, you know, sparks, but, um, but that's my focus is where can we be one so that we can be what God made us to be? Um, and I guess oneness is more my focus than equality uh, because I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think of like, am I equal to that or am I not equal to that? I guess, I don't know. Anyways, so if you see anywhere I'm wrong, please let me know. God be with you. I hope this makes sense, and uh, I'd like to be corrected if I'm wrong, and, and I'd like to really understand what's the problem with, um, with my view or anyways. God be with you.